it okay if I welcome you home? <laughs> welcome home, Maxwell. I've been missing you so bad. I don't know what to do without you. Hey, y'all, I am so excited to be here with you and hear what God's put on your heart. And as you pour it out, you just know that we're going to be drinking. Are you ready for something? Is that why you came tonight? To drink some? To get a little bit fired up? To get moving in the right direction? Whatever Maxwell and Caitlin got, got for us, it's God's perfect time for us to receive it in Jesus' name. And it's time for us to drink deep today. So as I pray for y'all right now in Jesus' name, I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be in this house. We welcome you. Ricky started off. He said, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to change us and move us. But you know what? If we hang on to our own uh, flesh part, there's not going to be no, no void, no opening for us to be able to become the good soil. So right now, in Jesus' name, we just break every curse that's stuck in us, all our woe is me things and all the things that are holding us back, all the religious pride and identity of a self-promotion and all of those kind of things that hold us back. We're not stuck in some religious box or we'll never change, we'll never move. But we're going to move in Jesus' name because this house is hungry. This house is full of uh, a bunch of sponges up in here, sponges of the Holy Ghost. And here comes the wave from the ocean of the heaven right now, right on us in Jesus' name. And it's coming through Maxwell and Caitlin right now. It's coming right through them in Jesus' name. Lord God, we know that sometimes it's our spirit man resting right in our belly that begins to rise up. And there's a rising up coming up. It's a, a rise of confidence, Maxwell, that God showed you. He's put you in a position, and you're going to speak this into us. And you're not going to speak it into our head. It's going to speak into our spirit in Jesus' name because that's what changes us. And that's, what's good. that's where eternity is happening. And that's why we've come today. And God has anointed you and Caitlin for this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But I'm glad to be back home. I missed y'all like crazy. I got so tired of Cindy. I mean, she got so tired of me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and now we're home full of the joy of Jesus and the love of Jesus. And we missed you and we're glad to be here. Bring it, boy. I think we all missed you as well. So three weeks ago before he left, he asked us to, to speak on God's grace and, our, and then... God's grace, in, or grace in our marriage, and then just grace personally, uh, which for us over the past three years has, uh, it has been a, we've had to learn grace from the very beginning. I mean, it's been, it's been a, an interesting three years. Uh, definitely in growing in that and uh, being able to show each other grace and accepting grace. Um, and to expand a little bit on that is that we're just covering these three topics, but Pastor Allen, whenever he first challenged us, he's like, sometimes it's hard to see um, the grace in your life and so we kind of had to step outside to be able to see the grace completely and then since we got to speak in front of the church a few weeks ago um, I've begun to realize that it's not just in those areas where grace exists like how I treat someone else especially like say for example in a service industry whenever they mess up my order three times in a row um, how am I going to respond to them how am I going to treat them that's part of loving um, loving big and then it also relates to how we show grace to our enemies you know um, am I going to do that are we going to do the things that the word teaches us about how to treat our enemies? Or am I going to continue, or will we continue to be hostile to them and not respond or react out of love? And then another area that I recognized grace in is as a mom. Um, you know, Elizabeth Elliot, she had said that people always say, that 
my kids are driving me crazy. And she said, no, that your kids are not driving you crazy. What, what they're doing is they're revealing to you where you lack in true relationship with the Lord. So if you're easily angered by your children, then that's an area that needs to be surrendered to the Lord. And so just like with my lovely toddler showing her grace, and especially like with my son, he doesn't get the concept whenever I give it to him. He's nine years old. And it's like, really, Walt, I've already told you this, man. And instead of being harsh with him, I have to be gracious with him and be gentle in my approach and in my response. So the grace covers a multitude of areas, but we're just covering these three tonight. So So I'll start off with the uh, Luke 7, uh, 44 through uh, 47. Which is, uh, turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman I entered, that entered your house? You gave me no water for my feet, but she, with her tears, has washed my feet and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she hasn't stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You didn't anoint my head with oil with olive oil, but she has anointed my feet with perfume. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. That's why she loved much. But the one who is forgiven little loves little. And it's the same thing in with grace. We can't expect anybody to, to know how to show anybody grace if they haven't received it from the Father. Because if you received your grace from the Father, it changes changes your heart. It changes everything about you. And it will give you compassion for others. Uh, and also, like Caitlin said, that uh, grace cultivates gratitude. So in that being said, you know, I know for me and my, and my uh, little over three years of coming to the Lord and uh, growing and changing. I have a lot more gratitude, way more gratitude than what I did. Uh, so grateful. We're, yeah, we're, we're working, the, the Lord is, has, you know, and so we're, we're learning and we're growing and uh, learning to show each other grace in, in the moment, and uh, so praise God. Um, so the very first point is, is over God's grace in our lives, and that basically to sum that up is our testimony itself. Um, you know, I know that for myself personally, just by the things that the Lord has done in my life, he has shown me grace. Really, honestly, I should not be in front of you guys tonight. I should be in prison um, because of poor choices that I've made and exposed myself to. Um, I should be in prison. But the Lord showed his grace, and he intervened in the situation, and it kept me from going to prison and actually allowed me to find him in a completely different different way. Um, the Lord has shown grace in my life um, by just my mental health period. I've um, been exposed to some serious, serious traumas. Um, whenever I was in fifth grade, I was in a guerrilla attack at the Dallas Zoo. And uh, because of the trauma that I had gone through, they, uh, the doctors said, you'll never recover. And I had to, I, not I had to, I began to accept I would never recover from that trauma. Um, it was very difficult to even go into, like, say, Walmart 
um, just this, the, the, the increase of people caused um, increased anxiety and would immediately become a trigger that I'd begin to go hide in the aisles. And so what I accepted as I'll never recover, the Lord graciously healed me from that to where there's literally no fear whatsoever to look at a gorilla, to go into Walmart, to go to the zoo, to, you know, to, to face those old triggers. The Lord never had to heal me. It was completely by his own love that he chose to heal me and through his grace that caused that. Um, just other things that I've been through in my life, you know, like, Max and I, to begin to incorporate our testimonies together, we did come from a background of drug addiction and um, alcohol. And so whenever we had stood up and spoke, I, I made it very clear, we are not recovering addicts. Um, <laughs> the, like the Lord has completely, graciously taken all of that away um, there is no desire whatsoever, and it's because we recognize his grace in our life that just like how whenever Joseph was tempted by, y'all help me out, by Potiphar's wife, right, and he said, how can I sin against my God? And that's exactly where we stand at this point today. How can we do that to him after he's already rescued and redeemed us from from that horribleness, that emptiness, and that brokenness. And not only that, but he's taken two people from that background, and he's blessed Max with a wonderful job that, that he describes as his dream job um, that he never knew was what he wanted to do. He's given me the opportunity to be able to stay home and be a full-time mom and focused on the house and Everything else that he's gifted me to do, I, he, like it's all because of his grace that I'm able to do. We are able to do these things today. We don't have to walk around with um, labels that say drug addict on them or, you know, um, mental health patient on it or anything like that because his grace has broken it. And that's what, that's what, the scripture that Max was reading tonight about the woman who poured it all, it, it was, she, she poured a year's worth of, of perfume on Jesus' feet. And Simon was like, you don't have to, like, why are you letting her do that? And Jesus explains, it's because she recognizes how much she's been forgiven. And so grace cultivates worship. And so whenever we recognize God's grace in our life, it completely transforms the way that we just simply live our life. It turns into a life of worship. Just like how I referenced with Joseph, how can I go back to my vomit and sin against my God? Because he has redeemed and restored me and set my feet upon the rock. And so that's one that is where we recognize his grace in our life um, is that if you had asked if you had set us down three years ago and asked us, "Hey, what do you imagine your life is going to be like in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now what w how would you describe it and we we jokingly say all the time. We never pictured any of this. Um, and we are just blown away by just what the Lord continues to do in our life. Amen. I very much, I mean, agree, and we do. We say that all the time because I, I never thought in my life that I would be up here uh, or be at a church home and as involved as I am working with kids ministry and all that uh never saw that coming uh never saw having you know three children well four children and the one we lost shiloh 
never, I mean, never saw any of it. You know, I used to say, I'm not having kids. I don't want kids. But in in my mess and in my in my past, he he led me. I mean, it, as much as I tried to run away from grace, you can't run away from grace. But I tried to. I tried to run away from the Lord and block him out with drugs. Uh, but he always caught up with me, and then finally caught me. But in my mess, he channeled me to. Uh, a relationship where I met a little girl who I fell in love with and, and God used that whole moment just to change my heart to where I wanted a, a little girl. I wanted uh, children. And I never thought I'd have it. And the Lord has definitely blessed me with a wonderful wife uh, who supports me and sh- shows up and shows out for me. And... Uh, <laughs> Teaches, teaches me about grace for sure but the Lord has uh, he's through through everything uh, at, at being at treasure uh, and actually receiving and accepting you know Christ as my savior and letting him have control of my life uh, it's it's been drastic and uh like she said, there, there's nothing else I want. Nothing. Uh, I receive it, and I want it constantly. I constantly want grace. I don't want to run from it. You want to start off on grace in our marriage? I know you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a fun topic, grace in our marriage. Um, Okay, so I'm going to preference with that I do not believe that there's a perfect marriage out there, Um, that there's still, you know, areas that everyone is growing in, and um, so I'm not going to profess that the two years of marriage that Max and I have been together, married, um, (laughs) that we're perfect already. Um, but what I can say is that we each had a failed marriage, so we know how not to do it, and we both have grown up in homes where the marriage fell apart. So, again, we witnessed as children, um, how not to do it in those, in, in that area. And so, what we have learned about grace in our marriage is that the best example description that I could give is that over and over again in the Word, it talks about, first of all, the two shall become one. And then it also talks about a tree. And whenever I realized this concept or this this image, it totally transformed the way that I approached my husband Sometimes. Sometimes I'm in my flesh, <laughs> if I'm just being honest. Um, but it's that, <laughs> um, is that, is that we are one tree. And uh, this dude who has a French name, I don't remember his name. Anyways, he had talked about that may your roots grow more and more together and deeper together so that once all your leaves fall off, you can look up and see that you are one tree. And so that's become our goal is that is that we are that one tree, even though we're two separate bodies, right? But that we're that spiritually sound one tree. And so there was one service where the Lord was just really giving me vision after vision And in one of the visions, and this happened recently, uh, it was mine and Max's root system. And it was twisting together, but I could feel it physically. It was so painful. And he told me, stop resisting. You're becoming one tree. Stop resisting. And it's that we've realized recently where the resistance comes from. Um, 
And this is areas in our marriage where we have to show each other grace, how we were brought up, the, the traumas that we've gone through, the, the failed marriage that we've each experienced. We're having to learn to give each other grace and not to look at each other as the ex-spouse, but instead to look at each other as you're Max and I'm Caitlin and I'm not against you. And... Um, but also in that is that a thriving tree, its root system does not attack itself. And so if I'm constantly bickering and nagging um, at my husband, or if he's nagging and, and, you know, getting on to me, you know, I'm just being real, um, then, um, then all we're doing is allowing chaos to, to thrive instead of allowing fruit to be produced within our marriage. And so even whenever we hurt one another, as we're coming to learn, it's walking out 1 Corinthians 13, whenever he talks about what love is. Um, something happened recently. Um, I'm not going to go into the details, but I do not agree. I did not agree with the decision that Max made to procrastinate on something, which has now caused major problems in our life. And it comes up almost every single day. And um, I'll be honest, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And what, whenever I first took it to the Lord and I told him, I have every right to be angry. Every right. And... Then he said, okay, all right, let's start going. So he started leading me through the scriptures and led me to 1 Corinthians 13. And he asked me, are you loving him through this? Yeah, yeah, I'm loving him. Okay, so uh, uh, are you keeping a record of wrong? Um, well, okay, uh, yeah, okay. Um, are, are you, let's see, going through, are you being patient with him? Or instead, are you being short temper? Are you being irritable with him? Or, you know, he just started going through everything. And what I've discovered is that even in the moment of hurt, I was not loving him the way that I should have been and therefore not showing him the grace that I should have been, um, you know, and, even daily things. Uh, I'm not an easy person to live with. Um, <laughs> um, I will, I'll admit, I'm a little, I'm a little feisty sometimes, um, and I like things done a particular way. Um, and so, whenever he doesn't do it the particular way or in a timely manner. Um, you know, I have the choice to make. Am I going to show him grace and forgive him for um, the many things? Or am I going to get in my flesh and... And so it's a choice that I have to make and an action I have to walk out. Um, but just because I check it off that, oh, I showed him grace in this area, so I got my check mark for the day. I don't have to do it again. Um, that's not how it works. It's, it's, it's a constant um, moment by moment sort of a thing. And now he's going to talk on my pregnancy. Okay, go ahead. She's not hard to, to live with. Not at all. She's a... Uh an angel. <laughs> I had something, but I lost it. Uh, no, no, there was something else that I was going to go, but I lost it. Oh, uh, as she was talking about you know, looking at each other differently. Uh, we were talking the other night, and, you know, 
we just kind of been going through it a little bit, uh, and we were talking, and we we realized, you know, like I said, we're not perfect, but we got to realize that, you know, we're not going to be automatically healed from everything that happened to us as children as we grew up, you know, the way our parents raised us or whatever happened, previous marriages, any of that. Uh, we're not going to be, you know, just automatically healed like that. Uh, it takes time. Uh, it takes time to relearn how to live differently, how to live how Jesus wants us to live. Uh, so we learned that, you know, there was areas in, in my raising, you know, from my father that really kind of beat me down and really just kind of beat me down into a little shell, a little, I mean, hurt puppy, it pretty much. And, uh, you know, that's something that the Lord's been fixing in me, in my heart, and in my, I mean, just growing me in. And uh, so I told her, and she was raised, uh, claws all the way out, dragging down the curtains, I mean, just... But we we can't we got to remember that in showing each other grace that you know we're still affected by these things and we're still growing uh, and trying to change. But uh, so that's a very important key there is remembering we're still being molded. It doesn't define us, but we're healing. And now back to her pregnancy. And uh, realized that I was thinking, I was like, man, she's not the same as when we were dating. <laughs> and then I realized she's been pregnant most of the time we've been together. <laughs> so I haven't got to, we haven't got back to the, you know, the hormones being leveled out and everything being good. It's been, but, uh, man, the, the, the Lord has been working on me in, in many, many areas of grace and also in, in growing myself because uh, there are things about me that, you know, that would get affected by her, her claws out. And I, I wouldn't react well. Uh, and, uh, but overall, I mean, we're really quick to to catch what we're doing, you know. We just give each other a little space, and uh, well, I'm learning how to do that now. You know, I don't have to. I tried to fix it and get an answer out of her immediately, and that never goes well about what's wrong. But I, I'm learning uh, to just give her space, uh, and definitely uh, grace, and just being patient, uh, realizing that hey, she's she's. Uh, She's under her guards down a little bit more with the hormones and everything, and the spiritual attack is going to be a lot more so than if she was not. So I have to be there and ready to war for her whenever things start going south. Because uh, there's, there's been times where the enemy has had a good hold on her, and I've been at work and had to come home and, and war for her. And, uh, I mean, that's just the fact of the matter that y y women, when y'all are pregnant, I mean, y'all are under severe attack. And it's been a, a huge learning process for me, but uh, I I'm, I'm learning and uh, I'm applying it and growing. And uh, the Lord has been really showing me how to, how to show her grace in these times. But overall, I mean, it, it's... I wouldn't trade any of it. <laughs> it. 
it's been uh it's been it's been uh I'm just still blown away all the time from from where I was to where I'm now and with where the Lord's brought me and brought us. And now I guess uh so we'll we'll get into the grace, personal grace and for me that's a hard one for, for me to show myself grace. And I think uh the main place for myself really uh in showing myself grace is is my pride. I do not like her being right all the time. She's not right all the time, but but she she's right a lot of times and Oh, it takes me off. <laughs> and that's my, that's, man, that's my downfall right there. But, uh, I fail. I mean, I fail all the time. I mean, at, at work, I mean, driving, somebody irritates me. Driving through Tyler every day, I mean, it happens. Uh. Uh, but just like looking at each other through our broken upbringings, uh, I got to look at myself through my, through my issues and, uh, give myself grace for that and realize, you know, I, I I'm, I don't want to make excuses for it. Oh, well, I'm better than I was. I don't want to do that. But I really, I really truly believe that I have applied a lot of the stuff that, that the Lord is wanting me to apply in my life to change. That my heart is changing. And, you know, I, I believe that and I, I believe and I receive that grace. Just like Austin had preached, you know, we don't, don't want to cheapen God's grace. Oh, Anthony. Anthony said that. Spoke a message on cheapening God's grace. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to cheapen what, what Jesus did on the cross for us. Not one bit. Uh, I don't want to cheapen the life that he has given me now. Uh, the deliverance from all the, the things that have been holding me back. I don't want to cheapen any of that. But uh, that was grace, personally. Uh, that was when I learned how to forgive myself for everything that I did in my past. Once I learned how to forgive myself and receive that grace, I was able to, to start to move forward. And just be grateful every day for where the Lord's brought me. And I even I try to try to do it when I'm do, having a bad day. I try to still be grateful and show gratitude. I don't always succeed, but I repent and I move forward. So I, I know that for me personally, showing myself grace. Um, as I have learned, is that perfectionism is a stronghold. And um, from a very young age, it was erected. And so to walk it out in faith and show myself grace that I don't have to be perfect and that others do not have to be perfect has most definitely been a challenging area, but a growing area for me, especially. And so it changes my perspective on how I see things and how I see people, <laughs> even how I see a situation. Whenever I practice that grace, that it doesn't have to be perfect. Even in, into my life, like all these expectations of 
it was supposed to look like this, and we're supposed to be in our dream home by now, and um, doing this and doing that, and none of it's going according to plan, and I have to remember that, that he, first of all, I'm reminded of a scripture, that he's perfected through my weakness, so I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it all figured out. My life does not have to be perfect. And where that happens is that in those moments of me looking at it, that it has to be perfect, is where I begin to catch myself and hold up, wait a minute. It doesn't have to look like this. And so I'm able to show myself some grace. I mean, I know that even today, I was on the phone with Max, and I was like, I have all these to-dos. Sounded like Martha. I have these many to-dos that have to get done, and I'm overwhelmed. And he said, you just need to breathe, and I'll, I'll be home to help you. And it was in a simple moment of someone saying, it's okay, just breathe. I'm here to help you, that I was able to step back and say, okay, let me show myself some grace. So the things that I wanted to get done didn't get done to make the house perfect and have a perfect day before we came here tonight. But but practicing that grace that um, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it all together. And a lot of times, a lot of people will come through these doors and think that before they do this or they do that or surrender their life to the Lord or get baptized or all these different conditions before they do whatever, that they have to be perfect. And it's about giving ourselves that grace that we don't have to have it all together. We don't have to walk in a church looking gorgeous and fabulous um, with our lives, our, our children well behaved our house put together and food, you know like that he wants us as we are and he continues to work on us and grow us and make us into that masterpiece by tearing away all the bad and so um anyways Oh, yeah, so grace is a choice. It's not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Um, So that is something that I wanted to to share. Um, Just like how uh, reference to um, the unforgiving servant. The, The king forgives him, forgives the servant of his debt, but the servant has the choice to make to either walk out that grace in a similar situation or to make the choices that he made. And he made the choices that he made instead of showing grace to someone else as well. Um, and it comes from the heart. I'm learning that a lot. It begins, it's revealing your heart that if you're willing to show grace, it stems from the heart because it's not something that, you, that would come from the mind necessarily. And so... And it requires us to put others before ourselves um, whenever we do show that grace. And it requires us to sympathize, to be able to see the person um, that we're showing grace to, um, to to sympathize with them. You know, I had a situation that occurred a couple of weeks ago, and I just simply told the lady, look, I'm a mom with, with two kids. I got one on the way. Um, my schedule is active. I don't want to say busy, cause that, but it's active. And so I'm sorry I didn't get this for you, but here, here's why. And I was wanting sympathy, like, okay, here, I'll show you grace. But that was their choice to show it or not. But it caught whenever we give grace we're sympathizing, like, 
okay, I can understand. Like, our waitress, having a bad day, messed up on our order, I don't know how many times. And I, we had the choice to make, do we condemn her for not doing a good job, or do we sympathize and say, it's okay, we understand, you've already explained it, you're short of staff, it, the place looks busy, it's completely a choice and it comes from the heart, and it's, it's a gesture of love for sure. You want us to pray out, Mr. Ricky? Or you want to pray out? You got que questions? Questions? <laughs> Q&A? Thomas, I can <laughs> I'm just going to get up for a minute and give y'all just a little bit of spiritual advice. How about that? Because uh, as, as a couple of newlyweds we're going to call you, I see, uh, I see you growing in the Lord. And I see the Lord loving both of you. And I'm going to share with you just briefly from the book of Ephesians. You might as well go ahead, Max, and accept the fact that she's going to be right all the time. <laughs> and whether she is or whether she ain't, it's to your advantage to let her feel like she is, okay? I mean, I've already learned that. <laughs> I've already realized that. Huh? I'm pretty sure it is. It's in the, I'm pretty sure it is because it says, uh, however you treat your wife, that's the way I'm going to treat you. And this is the Lord speaking to you. If you want the Lord to treat you in a loving way and in a godly way, then that's the way you've got to treat her. Now, I want you to know that God gave you this man to be a helpmate. And that don't mean that when he gave it to you this man that he's perfect. But I will tell you this. The, the more a helpmate you are, the stronger this man will grow to be. <laughs> I can tell you from my own experience, the, the, the wife that the Lord's given me, the more she helps me, the stronger I get. And when I see some of the things she has to go through to put up with me and realize how strong a woman she is, it makes me want to be a stronger man, and it kind of melts me into loving her more and more. The same way God's going to continue to do you. You're going to look upon her, and just like you said, there's no 100% perfect marriage. But when you look upon her, what you've got to do, Max, is pretend that you're looking upon Jesus. Because the same way you look at her, that's the way Jesus is going to look back at you. And the same way you look at him, that's the way Jesus is going to look at you. And when we learn to realize that this, the greatest commitment God ever, you ever made, other than the commitment to the Lord, is the one you made to her. To love her and care for her and cherish her in sickness and in health. And when you come home and see she's had a bad day, best thing to do is walk, walk softly. To, I mean, <laughs> walk softly, ain't that right, brother? Is, is to be, be very careful and choose your words and choose your, choose your arguments, too. Yeah. And uh, I've learned, you can ask my wife, sometimes I've set a coffee cup down on the table and told her, argue with that coffee cup, I'm leaving. And I walk off. And I don't be, there's no arguing. Because the, arguing don't make anything any better. I mean, loving, you got to love. Just like she said, you got to continue to love. And I feel like, as y'all were sitting there, I read that, sitting right there. And the, For I know the plans I have for you. That's the Lord speaking to you. And it's not to hurt you. It's to prosper you and it's to help you and it's to grow you and it's you, to unite you. And you know, you, you was talking about forgiving yourself. Jesus has already forgiven you. I mean, he don't remember nothing that y'all done in the past. He throwed it away from the far as far as he can remember. And, and there's no need for y'all to bring it up no more. It's, it's, not, it's not there anymore. 
Jesus has forgiven you, and when you realize that all these people out here love you, and you're accepted. You're accepted not only by God, but you're accepted by every one of us, and, we, and you're our brother now. You're our sister now. And look at, the, look at the little children running around you. I mean, is that not a blessing straight up from heaven? And so all I'm going to do is just encouragingly remind you that uh, you're on the right track, and for your love to grow stronger and deeper, you got to put up with each other. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you, too. you got to learn how to put up with each other. And uh, my wife has to put up with a whole lot putting up with me, and, and I have to put up with very little putting up with her. So she's always right. <laughs> so, okay. All right, here, carry on. Well, Lord, I just thank you so much that you, thank you, God, that our lives are about you, and that even in the hardships and in the difficulties that we can look to you, and God, that we can trust what you say. That whenever you say that you're Jehovah Rapha, that God, you are our healer. That whenever you say that you're Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider, our protector. That God, that you do see us and that you hear us and that you know us. And God, it's, it's all because of you that, that our lives are turned around. It's all because of you that every one of us are, are a testimony of your grace. It's, we're, we're a testimony of your love. And I'm sure that if everyone had an opportunity to share just one thing about your grace, God, that, re, that we would end up, no matter how small the, the attendance is tonight, Lord, that we would be here all night. And so, God, I just praise you and I thank you that you have poured out your grace on us. Lord, I, I, I pray that... I pray that we have grace seeds that increase in us to be able to sow into others. Because over and over again, we hear that the harvest is here. And so, God, I... I I want you to be able to look down on your harvest and see seeds, a harvest of grace, a harvest of love, of mercy, that, that we didn't leave any aspect of you out of us. And so, Lord, we choose your grace. We choose to accept it and not be like the unforgiving servant, but we choose to, to, to be like the Good Samaritan. And we choose to even show those who would be considered our enemy, we choose to show them grace. Thank you, God, so much. I pray for traveling mercies over every single person that's here tonight. And Lord, I just, I, I pray a strengthening over all the marriages represented tonight. Thank you, God, so much. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>